Getting screwed over is bad. Getting screwed over while the people doing it tell you they're doing you a really big favor is infinitely worse. Now, I could be talking about the president, the banking system, Congress. I could be, but I'm not. What I'm talking about is, uh, let me get a show of hands here. How many of you own an Epson printer? Okay. Kodak? Thanks. Canon? Right? Lexmark? Got it. HP? Uh huh. Looks like the HPers went it hands down. I said you could put your hands down. Yes, you. Down the hallway, to your left, first door on the left. Not a surprise about HP. HP sells a lot of printers. They are for sure rugged. We've yanked out paper jams, accidentally slammed down the cover, stuck heavy books on top of the scanner glass, and pressed. Nothing kills it. And of course, they're cheap to own, but not to operate. If our car ran on HP printer ink, a Philip would cost around 25 grand. Now that's pain at the printer. A sale lessens the pain a little, usually very little. But the one Marie my wife ran across shopping for textbooks at the San Jose State University bookstore was a doozy. They had our cartridges for less than half what she just paid on sale at Target. Her only question when she called was, how many do we buy? Now, I don't know if you're aware, but the phrase license to steal was coined many years ago just to describe how college bookstores do business. Buy a textbook for $150, sell it back, and you're lucky to get 30 Next term, the bookstore turns around and sells the same book to another poor student or poor parent of a poor student for a hundred and a quarter. And at the end of that term, buys it back for 10 bucks. And so it goes until a new edition comes out and another poor student or a poor parent of a poor student is stuck with a used textbook on the theories of microeconomics in a global economy using Gibbon as a case study that nobody will buy back or has likely ever read, including the department head who wrote it and made it required course material for the school. You could call it capitalism. But since there's generally no other source for getting the textbook, a better word is monopoly. But whatever it is, it ain't philanthropy. And because bookstores give away nothing for nothing, I asked Marie to double-check the cartridges to see what might be wrong with them. All she found was a date on the cartridge box with a warranty that ran out in a week. A warranty on ink? Ink goes bad? According to sites I checked, as long as the water in the ink doesn't evaporate or get mold growing on it. Ever seen moldy ink? The stuff will evidently last forever. So why would HP have a warranty or ink expiration date or must use by date? Is HP worried about replacing printers screwed up by bad cartridges? Hard to believe since HP practically gives printers away so they can sell ink. And how would HP know if a cartridge were past its warranty? How? Well, a quick check online showed HP put a chip into just about all its ink cartridges. Hewlett Packard tells you it's to tell you how much ink is left in the cartridge. Like when printed pages get so light you can't read them isn't clue enough. Anyway, that's what HP says. But since they're about as philanthropic as university bookstores, the real reason is the chip stops the ink cartridge from discharging ink. As soon as you come to the warranty date, ink expiration date, or must use by date, you can have 90% of the ink still left and the ink stops flowing. So you have to throw away the cartridge and buy a new one. Nice. Real nice. On top of that, the bookstore, which I'm certain knew all about this little printing glitch, wanted to dump cartridges with dates about to expire in a week. As I said, it's bad enough getting screwed by HP in the college bookstore. Just that much worse because one claimed to be giving you a big price break and the other saving your printer early destruction. All while they were screwing you over. 
At one time, this country had ink wells. Now, we have ink pits. Something like a money pit, where ink, or your money, goes to die. I'm Don Laskin, and that was Observations.